but let's look at the navigation because I promised you that we would be only a few button clicks away from basically any setting in this camera. And that is enabled by this navigation section. There are six buttons here that will bring you to different pages. And the most, uh, the first button will give you the home page. And on the home page, we have put the things that we believe are the most important immediately for you as an operator, which would be red, green, and blue gain. Red, green, and blue pedestal, and also master gain up here. integration with Panasonic AKUC4000 and the associated CCU with the easy to pronounce name AKUCU600 PSJ is one of the deepest integrations we have ever made. And the default configuration for the RCP Pro is designed with pages of parameters and additional shift layers and OSD navigation so you can get to all of that good stuff. And yet it's very easy to reach any function in a few button presses. You can easily change how parameters are mapped to buttons as well to customize and increase the usability for the operator. The RCP Pro is designed for multi-camera control and you can mix in more AKUC 4000 cameras if you want or any other type such as a PC camera or a P2 camera and even other brands and models. RCP Pro is also great in the sense it has a web UI that makes it easy to manage cameras and connections. Let's take a look at the hardware on the table. We have RCP Pro right here, also a rack unit from Skahoy. This is a rack control Uno and it is set up to control audio parameters in the camera. We'll get back to that in the end of the video. And then finally the AKUC4000 camera over here. Now if you look at the cabling, the RCP Pro is a single cable solution. This is power over ethernet, data and power on a single cable. And this is how all Skahoy controllers work by the way. This is also single cable, that's the fiber going back to the CCU unit. So camera is connected to another Panasonic device called a CCU that is like a rack mounted unit and the fiber goes into that one. And that's actually the unit we are talking to over network with the RCP Pro. The RCP itself consists of a joystick and this type of device has many different names. We call it an RCP. I think that's the abbreviation for this kind of panel that is most widely known. It's probably remote control panel. Funny story is that other companies have different names like Panasonic. They also have an RCP. They call it an ROP, probably remote operation panel. And Grass Valley has something else. They call it an OCP, which is probably operation control panel. It's all three letters, right? And it's they are talking about the same kind of device. So um, we call it an RCP. This is RCP Pro and it has the most amazing joystick ever seen in the broadcast industry for an RCP. The joystick has all the traditional classic iconic features like you can push it and you will have your joystick override. It means it talks to a video router somewhere and that router will bring up the camera signal on a screen in front of you. That's the function of pushing the joystick. As a sort of backup, we also have it on this key. We call it preview on the label you see on the display. Secondly, it has a ring. So if you turn that ring, it's usually a potentiometer and it has end stops. We made it into an encoder. So it's a very high resolution encoder that allows you to adjust master black on your camera. And that's another very, very important setting. So you see the display here is actually showing you the master black setting when I'm turning the ring. So that's how the ring on the joystick works. And finally, most importantly, I would say we have the fade operation of the joystick, the one where you are moving it forth and back and you're adjusting the iris of the camera. We threw in that bell and whistle that you see the F stops on the display of the joystick, which I think is really, really awesome. And a thing that I'm totally in love with for this component. There's also a little LED up here on front. And those of you who know broadcast, you'll probably have your laugh that we swapped the F and the number on the display like I have. But you know, engineers, I'm an engineer myself, so I could have done that. But we are probably going to see the final version having the F in front of the number. So don't worry about that. But that's the basic things you need from an RCP. The joystick control with the three actions it has, 
the pedestal, which is on the ring, but also here. And then we have nice things like a tally LED, clearly visible. This one can be connected to a video switcher system or router, whatever. Whatever source you have for tally, you can show a, a green or red light in this LED bar. The display obviously can pick up a name from the software. We'll look at that later, etc. These control buttons down here are also important. One of them is lock your RCP. So no matter what anybody does, won't react. You see small lock icons in the displays all over the place as the RCP is locked up. Then we also have a call position button. And when I press this one, you'll see on the camera over here, you have, you have a little LED that lights up green. Now that is definitely too little to call the attention of your camera operator if he's asleep. So you probably need to connect it to some, some electrical shock device or, um, or maybe you know the, the traditional would be the viewfinder, right? Where there's like a tally lamp pointed to the operator. But that would be like, hey, please notice your focus. And that's right there. And finally, down here in this section, we have the shift key. That's very important on the RCP because the next thing we'll do is move up on the top of the RCP and focus on all those deep integrations that we have done and look at what are you know, located on these buttons up here. So when I press that shift key, you'll see that typically the, there's an additional layer underneath that we can activate in this way. By the way, this is also where you get your camera selector because this row of buttons up here would be your camera selector in case that you have multiple cameras set up. The next thing I want to do is to look at those settings that I promised you because now we have seen all the basics, the master black pedestal, the iris operation, joystick override, all that stuff that needs to be cleared out. I just, uh, yeah, I, I want to add that for the joystick override, we have GPI pins on the backside. There are three channels in, three channels out. You can use that to connect to your video router. It's also possible to use TSL or over network or any other way. It's super flexible. You'll see it in the software later. But let's look at the navigation because I promised you that we would be only a few button clicks away from basically any setting in this camera. And that is enabled by this navigation section. There are six buttons here that will bring you to different pages. And the most, uh, the first button will give you the home page. And on the home page, we have put the things that we believe are the most important immediately for you as an operator, which would be red, green, and blue gain red, green, and blue pedestal, and also master gain up here. So by turning these knobs, you'll see that I can adjust master gain in this case. I can typically press and hold the key to reset it back. I can also adjust the, the, the red gain. Now, I, I would need to turn this a whole lot to create some impressive and visible results to you guys. But if I press it just once, then I get into course mode. And as I turn the knob, you'll see that I much quicker get to large values of this number. So it's, um, it's a way to quickly move through a value range. And then you can click it once again, and then you have fine adjustments down to smaller values. So that's just one way to keep in mind. This is a navigation, no wait. It's like an interaction pattern you find on a lot of Skyhoy controllers. That, um, that is you have this fine course mode on parameters applied like, like this, uh, reacting to a push uh, on the encoder knobs. But okay, we have red, green, and blue gain. And what I'm really good at is messing up the picture for demonstration. So you, you'll see that we can quickly get somewhere where we don't like it too much, but I can also reset it just quickly so that for the rest of our demonstration, we won't have to suffer these inflictions coming from my experiments. But that's the home screen, guys. And if I kept going like that, deep integration in mind, it would be a very long video. So I need you to grasp the concept. And then I'll go through the menus. And those of you who know this camera, you can easily spot that we have it all here and also ways to get even deeper. So if you move on to exposure, you'll see that with the shift key in mind, Apart from having shutter speed enable, so we can set the shutter speed, uh, we have ND filter here, and that's also broken out on an easy to access key down here. I can just quickly show you the ND filter because you can see here that I'm changing between filter number uh, two, three, and uh, four. And by the way, notice that I do that with a button. How come? Because on Skyhoy products, you'll mostly find what is called four-way buttons. And that means that we can actually use all four edges of the button to detect 
presses. And that basically turns a button into potentially an encoder, so you can go forth and back in a value range. Super useful and very cool. We have the same here. I'm, I'm now working with the color filter, so we can change those color filters around by pushing this button. And you'll also find that this is on the exposure menu up here. So there's some redundancy. But think about it this way. We put everything up here, including even Iris. And then we broke out certain select things to buttons around on the RCP for easy access, including, for instance, Iris Auto, which gives us some kind of Iris Auto function as well. Let's see if we can find a filter that fits us a little better. And Iris Auto is on. All right. Move on to, no, wait, let's see what happens. Because if I press that shift key, you get to an additional number of settings that are considered secondary to what is on the first page here. Going to knee, we have knee enable, knee point, knee slope. We also have red and blue knee slope and point. And see how we also use the colors on the encoder's LED ring to indicate that it's actually red and blue uh, knee point that we are working with here. Holding down the shift key allows access to the HLG um, knee enable function. Moving on to gamma here, then you have gamma enabled uh, on and off. Uh, I think this is also one of those that are fairly visible uh, right right away. And um, we have red ga gamma, blue gamma, etc. cetera. Uh, black gamma, master, black gamma, red and blue gamma, etc. Holding down shift is actually not giving us anything additional. So in this case, for the category of gamma, that was only those settings that was were relevant to put out. Uh, flare is, again, a bunch of settings. You can read it out from the display. I am going to hold down shift and we'll see that in case of flare, there's also only these settings. But we can move on to page number six to 10. And now we have this one called on-screen menu. If I press this guy, we can enter into the on-screen menu. But before we do that, let's just look at the rest because we have matrix here. And with matrix, I can hold down shift and then get additional matrix parameters. Notice how these are also blocked out in case they, for whatever reason, are not available. They are, It's shown that they are not available. It, it's probably a setting somewhere that needs to be changed from off to on or the opposite way before we can work with the uh, matrix. Actually, it would be a setting like matrix. Right there. Now, uh, move on, moving on to color, and this is a really deep one. And this is where I was like, oh my gosh, what did my engineers do? Because the shift key suddenly turned into more than just a shift key, and now it's cycling through pages. So just notice this guy, saturation 1 to 6, 7 to 12, phase 1 to 6, 7 to 12. Oh. So there were a lot of details happening up here in the color menu. Still, just a few button presses away, right? No navigation of complex touchscreen menus or anything. It's all tactile. And then we have noise reduction, skin tone management, color temperature on this screen. We can move on to the last page where we have clip and audio. And with audio, we have settings that are also found on this panel over here. So let's just wait with that. And final press on this one. We are back into the home screen and we can do the, the most typical things we, we want to do. So... I promised you on-screen menu because if you know this camera really well, there's a chance that you actually spotted something that we did not integrate. It, it may still be in our integration, just not broken out into the configuration. But if you need anything that we have not put out on a button, you press the on-screen menu and we have two on-screen menus for you. We have the CCU menu and we have the camera on-screen menu. So if we first look at the CCU menu, I enable it on this button and you see now on the screen we have the CCU menu which can be navigated by this encoder. So you see I just go up and down here and if I want to get out of it completely I just turn it off. But basically I'm now navigating, I can press the encoder to enter into this menu and then I can navigate on into whatever I want to adjust on the CCU. All right, and. I believe my way out is getting to the top here. So navigating an on-screen menu is always a little bit cumbersome. But we are getting out of it here basically. Now let me show you the camera menu. So I guess this is coming from the camera, the one that I'm going to show you now. Putting this one up and we have the main menu for this guy. We can navigate around in it. It seems to have two pages. So there we go. A lot of things I can choose from. Let's go to auto setup, et cetera, et cetera. But let's get out quickly by turning it off. So that's the on-screen menu giving you access to anything. 
that the camera and CCU has to offer in that respect. Guys, thanks for watching this long. Uh, this far into the video, we have now been going through all the tactile control points from the RCP, but I'm sure many of you would like to know, so how easy is it really to set this up? And the good news is that Reactor, the software behind the blue pill inside products from Skahoy, is really easy to work with. It basically has two levels because it's not simplistic at all. It's super deep. It's really super deep. But we have made sure that for the basic quick integration, we have a great interface for managing that. And then you can also go deep. So let me show you. What you see right here is a web browser connected to the uh, RCP Pro. So you are shown the web interface always available on the RCP Pro. Let's just make this full screen. So that's basically the reactor application you're seeing right now. And it's already set up with connection to the RCP Pro itself. And you see there are uh, three blue configuration options available to me. The first one is camera selector. The camera selector means this is where I select which cameras will be available on the CCU. Uh, we already have the AKUC 6000 here. If I click this one, you see that it's also highlighted in the right side of the screen because those are my devices that could be combined into multiple units and so on. Don't worry too much about that. But if I wanted to add an additional camera, guess what? It would be as easy as pressing that button. And now you can see on the network here at Skahoy headquarters, there are a lot of devices popping up that I could now select and add into my um, RCP as a camera I can control. If you look at the actual setting of this one, we can just bring up the details view and you see what you would expect. IP address, the port if necessary, if relevant. It could apparently be different than 49152. There's a username and the password involved here and there's also a camera name. So the name you see right here would be the one that appears in the display and there are also other ways to, to, to set this up. Device ID is if you have multiple cameras. So assuming that you had a second camera you would of the same type, it would have to have ID number two, three, four, et cetera. So that, that's a few things, basically how you set this one up. And quite often when we add devices, you see that we have some net, network discovery. So if a device announces itself on the network, we are able to find it. Before we leave the topic of camera selection, I want to show you the camera selector and the additional details that we find inside. One thing is selecting the, the model and associating it with the configuration. There are multiple things we can do in here. We are basically picking that it's, it's the device number one from the um, device core called AKUCU600, which is the device we have over here. But additional information is that we can change the name. So if I thought that I wanted this camera to be named differently, I could change it to to be called awesome and it would be shown in the display. I can also change my configuration and for this camera, we have only one configuration right now, but imagine for certain popular options or even if you wanted to, to do this for yourself, you could redesign the configuration, start with the one that we have provided and, and make it more advanced or less advanced and then you would have additional configuration options that basically lays out all the interaction that you have seen me uh, demonstrate on the RCP today. And then there's also an additional configuration for the lens because we know that not all the time you would use this camera with a Fujinon lens on connected to the camera. It could also be a different lens because of some workflow need that's just different. And we want our products to seamlessly integrate different hardware. So in, in special cases where the camera body is used with a different lens and you still want to have a unified RCP experience, that option to select an alternative configuration to manage your lens actually provides that and gives a seamless workflow for the operator. So that's a testimony to that design feature. And then finally, we have fields for pointing out the tally index. That's basically the uh, typically the um, input or on, on a video switcher that we need to relate the tally information in the LED to. And then also the routing index, which is what uh, input on your video router is associated with the joystick override. So those are things that are related here in the end. And then finally, you can actually change the color of the uh, camera selector, which is currently blue on this one, but we can change that over to a different color. So now it's amber. So those are tiny details you can adjust here for the camera selector. And that's the single most important thing about setting up cameras. 
the tally forwarding and the routing trigger, they are aligned with the need to specify which system is it that provides this service to you. And there you can see that we have set up a number of out of the box options here, like you can associate it with an AJ Kuma router, like magic routers, ATEM switches, vMix systems, etc. So all that is also available in here for tele forwarding and also for routing, picking a configuration that determines where does it come from. And right there you see TSL being used as a, a supply a source for tally information for your RCP Pro. Before we wrap up the video, I promised you to just take a look at a secondary device that we have provided for today, and that is the VREC Control Uno. On this one, we also connected to the camera CCU, and we also have pages, so we could have multiple cameras here. And then we have a menu for uh, some settings. So this is basically navigation. We can select microphone number one, number two. So all these settings are brought out on knobs on this rack unit. So as we turn this knob, we can adjust the gain of the camera and the amplification and, and so on on the microphone channels. The idea of showing you this is that control of a camera from a Skahoi point of view is not necessarily limited to the RCP because we have like 40 plus minus a whole bunch of different panels that provide different form factors that gives you the convenience of bringing control into any kind of context. And this would be one example that maybe you want to have audio control of this camera completely separated from the RCP and brought over onto a rack unit that's possible. And I just want to mention that to you because the integrative work we have done between these two units, the RCP and the camera, is really much more flexible, can be mapped onto any of our devices. So keep that in mind as you're watching this video that the flexibility is simply endless. So as a whole, RCP Pro is extremely powerful and very cost effective device for the feature set you get. And with the AKUC 4000, this amazing camera, we are very excited about the control we can, we can do with this. If you have any comments and feedback, it's really much appreciated. Just send an email to our friendly support staff and if you want to stay in touch with Skahoy News, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, to our Instagram, and our Facebook feeds.